To feed his wife and three children, Kilo often goes fishing in the river. Each time, however, he watches out carefully for the most dangerous animal in Africa, the hippopotamus. Kilu is a Duru. He lives in Taboon, a small village of about a hundred inhabitants, lost in the middle of the huge savanna of northern Cameroon. Cameroon is a West African country about the size of France. It has a population of 13 million and includes 200 ethnic groups. The Durus have always lived on the traditional crops of corn, peanuts and millet. Even large families have very little difficulty feeding their children. Sending them to school, however, is expensive, and growing cotton, which the German colonists began, is the only way to earn the necessary money. This year, a brush fire destroyed a large part of Kilo's cotton crop. His eldest son, Jibi, who is 11, has been promoted to a class in which the chalk and slate board he's used up to now have to be replaced by notebooks and textbooks. The only possibility for Kilo to meet this new expense is to capture a python and sell its skin. <laughs> I'm going with your uncle Dina to look for the giant snake. You come with us. I'll show you what you have to do to find him. You'll see that his trail will lead us to his burrow. Before leaving, Kilo and his brother Dina visit the sorcerer in preparation for facing the dark, mysterious creature. You must rub these roots on you to prevent the evil spirit of the giant snake from seizing your soul. Rub them all over you, even behind your leg. That's very important. Look, these roots have great magical powers. They were taken from a secret place in the hills where the king of the giant snakes lives. Take these other roots with you. In case you are bitten, rub the wound with them or you could die. And don't go near the hills, stay along the river. The next day, the three hunters begin their search, making sure to stay away from the hills, as the sorcerer told them. The legend says that the hills are inhabited by a huge python with horns on his head, 
the king of the giant snakes. There is no magic strong enough to fight his immense power. He is a devil who sends all those careless enough to cross his path to hell. After many hours of walking, Kilo notices a curious hole. Dina probes the gallery with a stick to see where it goes. Once the direction has been determined, the hunters dig a vertical hole in order to reach the gallery and see where it leads, so they can begin digging once again. Thus, hole by hole, they expect to get closer and closer to where the snake is hidden. The first hole leads to a dead end. Kilo decides to go further into the darkness on his own to try to find the path taken by the reptile. He disturbs a family of bats, which has also taken refuge in this underground labyrinth, dug out not by the snake, but by the Oristerapus, a strange nocturnal anteater whose highly developed claws allow him to dig even in the hardest earth. Night is falling, and Kilo and Dina have to stop searching. They'll begin again tomorrow, but now they're going to burn the high grass. The smell of smoke will discourage the snake from leaving his hiding place. And if he does venture out, the trail he leaves in the ashes will be easy to follow. The flames are impressive but the fire is not destructive. It cleans out the bush, thus preventing other fires and permitting nature to renew itself.
In the morning, the ashes indicate that the snake is still there and work can begin once again. At last, the snake is there at the end of the gallery. Just one more hole to dig. Another day comes to an end. The deep hole did not reach the gallery and the snake seems to have vanished. Kilo gives up, baffled by this magical, mysterious disappearance. Two days later, Kilo and Dina ask Maiduko and Abba to help them. Their reputation as hunters is great. They possess magical powers. The two veterans scold the men for their clumsiness that enabled the python to get away. For them, the reason is the sad result of having refused to be initiated when they were younger. Had Kilo and Dina done so, they would have learned the secrets needed to foil the giant snake's tricks. They would also have known how to get the spirits on their side, without which no hunt can succeed. But Abba and Maiduko were old friends of Kilo and Dina's late father, who did them many favors. In his memory, they agree to help Kilo send his son to school. They will capture the giant snake and give the skin to Kilo, but they will keep the meat for themselves. extraordinary scouts. At a glance, they know if a burrow is inhabited and by what kind of animal. This one is the home of a porcupine.
Just before nightfall, Maiduko finds a burrow which seems to belong to a big snake. There, the giant snake went in through that hole. There's another way out over there. We'll see if that's where he left. No, there's no trace. He's still inside. We'll spend the night here and dig tomorrow. What month is this? The month of the great cold. That's why pythons don't go out much. We were stupid. We forgot to take a gourd of bilbil. Yes, but if you drink too much, the snake will bite you. Hippos, you hear? They must be fighting. Break, it looks as if there is a winner and a loser. My Duko and Abba use the same method for capture as Kilo and Dina. They follow the gallery, and after a series of holes, they reach the reptile's den. The two men may not remember exactly when they were born, but they haven't forgotten the time when the village depended on their ability to capture giant snakes to pay Lamido's tribute. Every year, the village gave a certain number of elephant tusks, lion, and snake skins to this lord, who, although he has renounced this form of tribute, still reigns today over the land of his ancestors. <laughs> At last, the hunters have spotted the python. They search for his head. Mm. 
The animal's head is run through with a spear and the snake dies quickly. The two hunters made sure to stay away from the demon's incredible jaw, since if it bites, it never lets go. Although the bite is not venomous, it is extremely infectious. Carelessness has often led to a quick death by blood poisoning. As agreed, Maiduko and Abba divide the snake into two parts. The skin goes to Kilo and Dina, while the other two men keep the flesh, which they will eat. Back in the village, the python's skin is stretched out on the ground to be cleaned. salt will burn the flesh and stop the natural deterioration of the skin which begins as soon as the animal dies. It will be well conserved until it is finally tanned. Kilo and Dina are impressed by the snake's length, nearly six meters. To defeat such a monster, Maiduko and Abba must have great magical powers. Jibi would never have believed that a snake could be so big. Maiduko is very proud and cannot resist talking about his past exploits. One day I followed a huge trail. When I saw the snake, he just caught an antelope and was smothering it inside his frightening body. I waited for him to swallow the animal, since with his mouth full, he couldn't attack me. Then I hit him and went back to the village with two catches instead of one. Once the salting is over, Maiduko and Abba remain alone with the snakeskin to thank the spirits and through a final magic ritual to prevent the spirit of the giant snake from coming back to haunt them. <laughs> At the same time, in the village square, 
everyone is celebrating the cotton harvest, which will soon be over, and which will mean a little money for everyone. Kilo and his family are also happy. The sale of the snake's skin will make up for the loss of their cotton crop. Jibi will get his notebooks and textbooks. A giant snake is dead, but only so that a child can go to school.